Hey, check this out, Sooner fans. We are right here on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. Behind me is the Everest Training Center. On that side of me is Gaylord Family Memorial Stadium. And today we're gonna to meet with Coach Merv Johnson, who's the Director of Football Operations for the University of Oklahoma. He won national championships at Arkansas and Notre Dame before coming to OU to be Barry Switzer's co-head coach for the 85 national championship team. He's gonna give us a tour of the facilities, which gives you as a Sooner fan the opportunity to see what is what goes in to building championship caliber football teams. Most of the times we just see the product on the field without understanding what these players go through to prepare themselves for game day. It's gonna be a fun day. Let's go check it out. Uh, this is the Everest Center, the indoor training facility for the University of Oklahoma. Uh, Coach, you, you were with Barry Switzer on a 1985 championship team. You guys didn't have the luxury of something like this. Tell us about how you used to do it back in the mid-80s and, and what this, how much of a difference this building makes. Well, I tell you, we go back just slightly further where we didn't have the uh, Mosier Center, the indoor track. Right. And uh, we just had to make do out of bad weather or go to the old field house and work on the gymnasium floor. That was the best we could do. When we got the Moser Center, probably 20 or years ago or so, of course, the indoor track is in there. Uh -huh. And the infield of the track is, uh, is synthetic turf. And uh, it's the old turf. It's brutal. Uh, you know, the traction is absolute. It takes the skin off your arms when you get tackled, those kind of things. And really wasn't enough... Uh, space to work the entire team. We could do it, but it was awkward. Right. So we would try to split the offense and the defense and go in there <clears throat> at separate times to practice, which is difficult. And of course, you had to ask the track team to leave, and that's not always pleasant. Uh, I don't blame them for being upset. So, <laughs> And we couldn't kick in there. Right. Well, this came about in 2002, just in time to get ready for the Rose Bowl and mm -hmm. uh, practice for it in here. And it's it's been awesome. Uh, do all our kicking in here. We got a great turf to work on. Uh, the weather elements that usually age a turf are not existent in here. Freezing, thawing, bright sunlight, those kind of things. So our turf is just as good as it was when we started. As I say, we do all of our kicking in here. It's plenty of room. And of course, the off season in here uh, is made up of agility, running, and various drills. As you look around the walls, you can see that the players do. But uh, the big thing here is used to have to go outside the elements and practice in bad weather. And I was foolish enough to think that uh, it's important to do that in case it's bad on right. Saturday. Well, it probably would not be so intimidating, but by the same token, if you can come in here and have a great practice, hope that the weather's good on Saturday. And if it's not, simply because you had a great practice on Wednesday, rather than an awful practice, you may be a better football team anyway. So uh, the more they use it, the more I think it's it's better. And of course, you don't have distractions in here, pretty girls going by, car wrecks on Lindsay, air helicopters flying over, all that. Uh, the elements are non-existent in right. here. Wind, thunder, lightning, rain, none of it's in here. And uh, it is, it's been a terrific facility. Now you, you've got, uh, you said you can do all your kicking in here. You've got a full length football field in here. Um, when you look at the uh, different facilities around the Big 12 or even nationally, pro and college, how, how, how would this facility rank against some of the other, let's just say Big 12 schools? Oh, I think it see? would uh, be right at the top, especially with functionality. Somebody might have developed a cuter one with a bunch of paintings on the wall or something of this nature. I don't know what you could do to make this one better. I can't imagine a pro or college team anywhere have got a better facility than this. Most of the Big 12 teams now do have indoor facilities. A&M and Texas, of course, can afford it. Uh, the schools on the north side have to have them with mm -hmm. the weather that they have at Missouri and Iowa State, Nebraska when they were here and those kind of things. They have to have them. So they've all got pretty good facilities. Your recruits, when they visit now, uh, see a very nice place to work, a place where uh, obviously it would be good to come any time the weather's bad. And that's important uh, in the sense that you're not competing against somebody else's facilities, but they know that yours is just as nice as right. anybody else. They don't want to go someplace where you don't have one. All right. Well, um, this is where, like you said, the, the pro days are held, right, in here sometimes? Yep, sure. uh, in, all the agilities, everything running and so forth, off season is done in here. Uh, we want to see next, um, if we could, let's, let's look at the, the team meeting rooms and the, and the locker rooms and kind of look at how the team prepares for game day on Saturday. So sports science has come a long way, uh, probably in your coaching tenure, but overall since uh, football and athletic competition began. Behind this, you've got the treadmill whirlpool. Uh, as a coach and also as a, just as a fan of the game, tell us a little bit about this room that we're in, 
How has this been effective to the Oklahoma's football team in terms of helping guys get back on rehab or, or just keeping guys safe? Well, I, first of all, you know, the, uh, the training, athletic training aspect of it and everything involved is so much more complex and huge than it used to be. There's so much more liability and everything. So, you know, you really need to be on the cutting edge and up front with everything that you do. And this area in here, the uh, wet room or the hydrotherapy area, is for treatment of any kind of injuries and rehabbing them. And behind us is the my favorite in here. I think it's the, one of the best things that we've done is this uh, pool behind me that's uh, very deep with a treadmill on the bottom. It's a regular treadmill that you, you can change speeds, change angle, uh, change the demands of what you're putting on the athlete. Uh, it's got two jets on the far end that also can create a current. Once you get to where you're comfortable rehabbing your ankle injury, your knee injury, then they start working on your condition as well as conditioning as well as uh, as the treatment aspect of it. They've got a side, a side view camera and a front mm -hmm. view camera down there so that your trainer can watch and see that you're doing things properly. Uh, <clears throat> Sam Bradford trained in here in this pool uh, when he injured his shoulder the first time before okay. he decided to do surgery. And they would bring him the water in the pool up to his nose just about, and he had a big paddle in his right hand, and he's working it in all four directions, circle and everything else against the resistance of the water to strengthen and rehab that shoulder. Uh, uh, probably the best example in here because of the treadmill is anybody who sprains an ankle severely. Okay. They put it in a boot, and they wear the boot all day, every day, and they go to bed. In a few days, as you begin to get better, they bring you over here, they take the boot off, and you get in the pool, and you start walking again. When you couldn't go out on the track or out right. on the field and jog or walk, but they'll put you in there where the buoyancy of the water can get you going. As you progress and uh, get your range of motion back and your strength begins to come back, then they will speed it up. They'll take that treadmill, they will increase the angle, they'll increase the speed, they'll turn the jets on down the far end so that as you rehab your ankle, you're maintaining your conditioning, your aerobic conditioning, so that you can, when you get back out on the field, you're ready to go. So that's just an example of what goes on in here, and I think it's a, a terrific uh, setup. I'm gonna step back for just a second and make sure people can get a good, good view of, of the pool. And now we're about to go outside these doors into the actual training area uh, where players are examined and evaluated, and you're going to tell us a little bit about that area as well. You bet. This, this training room obviously is uh, in the uh, Switzer Center where football is, and it's football full time. But as you can see through these windows, there are athletes that uh, are from almost all the other sports. They have all have very nice training rooms, but any treatment of an injury and rehab from an injury is done here in the big equipment room where we have, or big training room where we have so much more equipment. Yeah, actually, I just saw before we started filming, Alex Brown, the uh, basketball trainer, on the on the table there. Yeah. Just a second, he'll get and looked at himself. Well, so. they, yeah, they they, uh, they they keep our coaching staff uh, in pretty right. good shape down here too. Anything, anything, and I've I've been down here a few times myself. <laughs>